Taking a look at what the GFS model is forecasting by the time we approach Memorial Day weekend, it does get very interesting right around the Caribbean region because we do see an influx of moisture move through, which should bring heavy rainfall right over the Caribbean islands, such as um, Puerto Rico, as well as the Hispaniola area. And continuing to move forward with forecasts, we do see an area of higher convective activity right over the Dominican Republic, as well as Haiti. We do see the heavier rain showers associated with this um, um, center of circulation just to the north um, east of this storm system and what's interesting is that the GFS model does develop a, a little bit more of a well-defined low level center with this storm system however based on how it looks um, from this forecast doesn't look necessarily extremely organized we do see that the storm is very lopsided it's mainly dry on the southwestern portion of this um, low pressure system while the, the uh, most of the moisture is towards the northeastern portion of this storm system which makes me s uh, still very skeptical that this will develop into a tropical storm and we also need to of course take into account that this is 228 hours out so there's still a uh, plenty of time for the computer models to really um, hone in on how this storm um, could potentially develop and really be, get a little bit more certain when it comes to how things will play out by the time we approach the Memorial Day weekend time frame. But we clearly see, based on looks of it, while it doesn't look necessarily very organized, there is a low-level center. It's over fairly warm waters and it does have a decent amount of convective activity around it, which is, of course, something we need to keep an eye on, especially now that we're quickly approaching that time um, into the hurricane season. And we also need to keep in mind that although the meteorological start date of the hurricane season starts in June 1st, the past most recent hurricane seasons, we've been seeing tropical storms develop right around the May time frame as I think that we should begin to consider maybe pushing back the hurricane season start date by how frequent we've been seeing a lot of these May tropical cyclones. But um, so we definitely can't disregard this area of low pressure system of low pressure either because there is always that chance and it's very interesting that the gfs model does develop an area of higher convective activity just north of the caribbean now of course when it's this early in the hurricane season it's going to deal with a lot of factors that will go against its favor when it comes to developing of course the wind shear especially this far up north and not only that um taking a look at the water temperatures while they are quickly warming up and certainly above average compared to what we see this time of the year there it's still a, um could be a little bit too cold for this to have a very high chance of developing so here are the current sea surf temperatures as we do see just the north of the Dominican Republic in Haiti the sea surf temperatures are hovering right around the low 80s but there isn't a lot of upper ocean heat content so this storm system is gonna have to move at a relatively fast pace over warmer waters um, just so it could be able to absorb a lot of that surface water without um, necessarily um, upwell the ocean um, right under it and bring the cooler waters to the top which could limit its possibility of this shutting even further so that's the good news that the upper ocean heat content is very low during this time of the year despite the fact that sea surf temperatures are slightly above 80 degrees um, right around the northern portion of the Caribbean however this is still more than enough for a tropical storm to develop and even if this were to move just north of the 80 degree um, um the 80 degree threshold um a little bit further northward it's still very well possible we could see a subtropical entity develop out of this as it's certainly not out of the realm possibilities to see that even when the ocean water temperatures are below 80 degrees it still needs to hover closer to 80 degrees and um and in this area while it's below 80 degrees it's ju close just enough that with just enough instability it could maybe develop subtropical characteristics if this were to move a little bit further northward so we definitely have to keep that in mind as well but based on looks of it still highly uncertain take everything while i'm saying with a huge grain of salt wait several days and we'll see if the computer models are still persistent on that idea then we'll keep a closer eye on this but for now just be aware of that possibility by the time we approach memorial day weekend as 
as maybe this could be our first tropical cyclone of the 2024 hurricane season in the Atlantic. Taking a look at the global tropics hazards outlook at this point over the next two weeks for the weeks ending May 28th and June 4th, we see that there is expected to be an influx of moisture right over the eastern Caribbean, which of course out of some of these pockets of moisture we see in the Caribbean, maybe that could enhance the chance of a tropical cyclone developing over that region like the GFS model is currently suggesting. So we're definitely going to need to keep an eye on it and I'll say if we were to see any possibility of a tropical cyclone developing, it'll most likely be just to the east of Jamaica because we clearly see that um, anywhere that's west of Jamaica or right around the area of Jamaica and Cuba, it's expected to be drier than average over the next two weeks or so. So over the Gulf of Mexico, it's a little bit less likely you're going to see any chance of a tropical cycle of tropical cyclone development over the next two weeks. As I'll say, the most likely chance would be over this area, but it's still Far from certain, I just want to emphasize that because we're um, we're just plenty of days out, like I keep saying. So just stay tuned as I'll make sure to give you guys more updates once you get a little bit more certainty with the computer models forecast. If we were to take a look at what other climatology models are expecting over the next few weeks, this one has up to a 40-day forecast, so this lasts until the end of June. We clearly see that during the beginning of, or at least the end of May and the beginning of June, there is expected to be a little bit more moisture right over the Southern Caribbean, which of course does raise the possibility of seeing potentially tropical cyclone development over that area. So when we see this climatology model, as well as a global tropics hazards outlook as well as even a regular computer model like GFS model expecting an influx of moisture over the Caribbean that it's most likely that that's at least going to happen so you should expect a little bit more rain than usual right over the Caribbean islands by the time we approach late May and early June but potentially more importantly that could raise the risk of tropical cyclone activity right around that time period so I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we do see maybe at least a possibility of tropical cyclone development between the late May to early June time frame over that area. But if we were to extend even further out into the more long-term future, kind of headed more into the middle of June to late June time frame, we see that it is ex um, this computer model is expecting things to dry up a little bit. We see that the yellows represent a little bit more drier than normal conditions. This is the week of June 4th going into June 9th. And then June 14th, we see that it is, we are expected to be a little bit in a dry spell right around the middle portion of June and even going into the later portion of June, um, extending into the Caribbean. But it, um, keep in mind, this is a very long term forecast that is subject to change. But based on what I'm seeing, it seems like around the middle to um, late portion of June, it could actually be um, better when it comes to a possibility of tropical cycle development, meaning that the chance may be less likely with drier than normal conditions. But again, I'll keep you guys updated if this idea persists um, as we approach closer um, to the middle to early portion of June and get a little bit more certainty regarding that forecast. Taking a look at another reliable computer model, the European model, the good news is that the European model isn't expecting really anything of interest right over the Atlantic over the next two weeks. This is going 240 hours out, and while we do see an influx of moisture move into the Caribbean, nothing substantial really develops out of it. So this is why I say the forecast is still highly uncertain if we see maybe a little bit of consensus for from um from the european model and the gfs model regarding something developing over the caribbean then i'll certainly let you guys know and that's certainly um something we would need to watch a little bit more closely if it were to come to that um scenario but as of right now the european model the good news is that it's not expecting anything substantial but i'll certainly keep you guys updated if we do see changes if we were to take a look at the wind shear over the Atlantic, we clearly see there's just plenty of wind shear, so it's going to be very hard 
for any area of convective activity to have a good chance of developing. It's not until we approach the later months of the hurricane season, of course, going into July, August, September. That's when we should see the wind shear subside and the chance of tropical cyclone development greatly increase. So you don't want to underestimate the hurricane season either if it does get to a slow start because it is very common during the beginning of the hurricane season with wind shear this strong as we clearly see that right over here and when it comes to relative humidity there's still plenty of dry air moving over the caribbean as well as the gulf of mexico despite this influx of moisture we're, we're seeing so it's definitely going to be difficult for um, anything substantial to develop under conditions like this but i'll certainly keep you guys updated so in terms of when we could see our first tropical cyclone, it could happen as early as maybe Memorial Day weekend if the GFS model continues to persist on that idea or it could maybe happen at an even later date going into late June because it seems like around the mid June to um, late June time frame we could see a pretty large pocket of dry air move into the Caribbean so we could see our first tropical cyclone develop as early as the first week of June but I'll certainly keep you guys updated it's still too early to say um, but keep your uh, but at least keep an eye on um, out um, during the last week of May and the early portion of June but that's it for now guys and I thank you guys for watching